the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. We prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this Mass. Let us call to mind our sins, and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. Into this Mass, I offer prayers for you. Pray for your loved ones, and pray for all those who have asked our prayers. Pray especially for families that are struggling at this time. Ask God's intervention for all of them. Pray for those who have anniversaries or birthdays, that God may bless them, that God may keep them. Pray for someone who is trying to hatch, or hatch a plan or a dream or a vision, that God may provide guidance and clarity. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever, Amen. The first reading is from the prophet Jeremiah. The following message came to Jeremiah from the Lord. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, write all the words I have spoken to you in a book. For thus says the Lord, incurable is your wound, grievous your bruise. There is none to plead your cause, no remedy for your running soul, no healing for you. All your lovers have forgotten you. They do not seek you. They struck you as an enemy who strike, punished you cruelly. Why cry out over your wound? Your pain is without relief. Because of your great guilt, your numerous sins, I have done this to you. Thus says the Lord, See, I will restore the tents of Jacob, his dwellings, our pity. Cities shall be rebuilt again, and the palace restored as it was. From then will resound the sounds of praise, the laughter of happy men. I will make them not few, but many. They will not be tiny, for I will glorify them. His sons shall be as of old. His assembly before me shall stand firm. I will punish all his oppressors. His leaders shall be one of his own, and his rulers shall come from his kin. When I summon him, he shall reproach, he shall approach me. How else should one take the deadly risks of approaching me, says the Lord? You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalmist, the Lord will rebuild Zion again and appear in all his glory. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord and all the kings of the earth, your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer, the Lord will rebuild of Zion again and appear in all his glory. Let this be written in the generation to come and let his future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy height. From heaven he beheld the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoners to release those doomed to die. The Lord will rebuild Zion again and appear in all his glory. Alleluia, alleluia. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and proceed him to the other side of the sea while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came towards them, walking on the sea. When his disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they cried. They cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat with him did him homage, saying, Truly, this is the Son of God. After making the crossing, they came to the land at Genezareth. When the men of that place recognized him, they sent word all to all the surrounding country. People brought to him all those who were sick and begged him that he might touch only the tassel of his cloak. And as many as touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today we celebrate the memorial of St. John Vianney. St. John Vianney has a very um, exciting story about him. In fact, a very instructive and informative story that I would like to share something about his life and see how you can relate to this um, magnificent human being. John Vianney had the devotion and always wanted to be a servant of God. He wanted to be a priest. So he um, sought admission and was admitted for training in the seminary. Now God gave him a lot of love for God and for God's duties and business. But God did not give him intellect. So he wasn't intelligent. He was considered one of the least intelligent person in his class. And so while John was in training, you know, the seminary, unfortunately, I would say, emphasizes intellect a lot. In some cases, emphasizes intellect over um, of a pastoring. So having the heart to care and to love and to be just present and allow God to use you as he chooses, that is often not emphasized as much because those are qualities that cannot be graded. You cannot grade the love somebody has. You can't grade that. You cannot grade the amount of care the person has. There's no measurement for grading that. You cannot grade the amount of presence a person could have. You cannot grade the level of compassion and empathy 
So those are all qualities that are essential for ministry. Unfortunately, they are not gradable. And so those could not mark, mark count for John. He had all of those, but he had no intellect. And so he wasn't doing well in school. Um, legend says, or history says, or tells us that he failed almost every exams. And his bishop liked him because he had such an amazing personality. And so the bishop always wanted him to, wanted to see how best he could push him, encourage him, and just let him cross the line and be ordained. But the bishop was also um, beholden to structures and principles and rules that are set in place that you must meet certain standards to be promoted and to be ordained. So his efforts at pushing John to the finishing line fell short. So somewhere um, during his ministry or his training, the rector and the entire staff recommended that John be, be withdrawn because he would not be successful, that he was too daft and too unintelligent to be a good priest. And so they sent that letter to the bishop. And the bishop felt like his hands were tied and could not do anything to save John at this time. So he called John back into his office and said, see the letter I've just received from the seminary, from the rector and the staff, and all of them are in agreement that you will not be a good priest, that you are too, that there's no way we can help you. And see, you know I have tried, I have done everything personally, to make sure um, I push you through all of this, but at this point, there's not much I can do. In spite of all my efforts, you have just proven to me that you are nothing more than a dumb ass. And so when he said that, John laughed and laughed, laughed aloud. And the bishop was like stunned why John would laugh at such a statement. I wasn't taking this seriously. But he needed wanted to know why he laughed and asked him, why, why do you laugh? And so John said to him, when you called me, you gave me that title, a dumb ass. It just made me feel so good. And the bishop was like, why? He said, yeah, because it just reminded me that in the Bible, Samson killed 10,000 Philistines with the jawbone of an ass. And I was thinking about if a human being could perform such a feat, a human being destroying 10,000 filling stings with a jawbone, only the jawbone of an ass. I can only imagine what God can do and God will do if God is given a whole ass like me. And the bishop was like, well, okay. He realized something that until now wasn't visible. He realized that this man does not have academic intellect, but he does have spiritual wisdom that is beyond anything anyone could ever imagine. And so he decided that he was going to send John back to the seminary against every recommendation he wrote that John is returning to the seminary and John should be prepared for the priesthood and John can be a good priest and John will be a good priest and a successful priest. Now, John went back to the seminary and they allowed him through and he got ordained. But when he was ordained, the bishop sent John to us I'm sure you know how they call him the cure of us. So they sent John to us. Ours was as good as dead a parish. It was almost dead. And the bishop reasoned that if I send him here, if the parish dies in his hands, we have little or nothing to lose. So he sends John, John Vianney to us. John goes to us and cures us. He goes there. And his ministry began to blossom and he became the a point of attraction for all of Europe. 
People were traveling from everywhere to come to us on pilgrimage just to listen to this super outstanding human being, just to be ministered to, whether in confession or just attend masses. And that's how us became the rallying point for all of European Catholicism. His title, The Cure of Us, came from there. That from nothing, God brought everything through a man who believed himself, believed himself and believed God, that God trusted him, even when no one else believed him. So I'm sure you can relate to John's story. There are times where everyone doubts your ability, your capability, your, your greed. Reason, because all of those things are not measurable. But if you don't doubt yourself, if you don't undermine yourself when others undermine you, if you don't minimize yourself when others minimize you, if you can trust that there's a reason why you are here, there's a reason why you are doing what you are doing, you will be amazed what God will do with you. Just as John believed that if Samson was able to do such feats with the jawbone of an ass, if you haven't caught an ass or called any name, go back and check. There's so much God can do with you. If only you would offer yourself and not doubt yourself and not doubt your God and not doubt what is possible when you and God come together. So always I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you remain the big light of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most gracious God, hear these concerns we are bringing to you today for the people who have asked our prayers, for those who need your intervention at this time, especially those who are undermined, those who are minimized, those who are disrespected, those who are dishonored around the world because they are thought of as little to nothing. We ask, O oh God, that you may give them the internal convictions to recognize your power and the workings of your spirit in them, that you may help them overcome and crush all, all boundaries and restrictions and show the glory that is yours. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, especially for those who are down with the coronavirus here in our country. Pray and ask, O oh God, that you may send them grace for healing and recovery. Pray for our doctors, our nurses, and all medical staff that you keep them safe and protect them in their sacrifices. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our men and women of the military, especially those in harm's way at this time. Pray especially for the young men who died at the training exercise off the beach, the sea of Cali off the beach of California. That God may grant them rest and peace. That God may bring comfort to their families. And that God may help their team. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died from this virus. Pray especially for those whose death has left very, very terrible consequences on their loved ones. That God may grant them rest. And that God may step into that vacuum and provide comfort and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have anniversaries or birthdays today. And pray for those who are the threshold of crisis right now. That our good God may step in as he did today in the lives of the apostles and calm the storms in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our blessed mother's intercession as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of our womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. 
may you come out bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I look at the four creation for three of them who have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and walk of the men and become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously sanctify this gift, O Lord, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts and lead them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that did be our salvation, all the saints everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are praying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the second acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We eat, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and his resurrection, we offer him, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring all to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We pray in the words our Lord gave us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy 
and may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. My dear friends, from me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I will say the word, and my soul shall be clear. Now let us say the prayer for grace, spiritual communion. Most gracious God, on this feast day of St. John the Beaver, St. John Vianney, your very favorite and most excellent priest, we ask, dear God, that you may send him as among, among the hosts of angels to bring this sacrament to all of your children around the world who are desiring so much to receive you and to be blessed by this sacrament. May that spiritual desire, O oh God, be nourished fully by the effect of this sacrament. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with this heavenly mistress. And in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sin of the devil. May God rebuke him with whom you pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the wings of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you who were able to join. For those who may join later, I pray that God may help you find confidence in you, especially when the devil tries to make you doubt you, only because others doubt you. Only God knows what he has planted in you and what um, he has designed for your life. If you don't doubt yourself and if you don't doubt your God, God is going to surprise you and you will surprise yourself. As always, I'd like to end by reminding you, you remain the delight of the Almighty God. God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of our Blessed Mother and Saint John Vianney, Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.